it's a great pleasure to introduce Sandeep Jayaprakash. Uh, he is a cloud architect and developer in our research, teaching, and learning org. And um, I had the pleasure of sitting down with Sandeep for the first time like two, three months ago. Uh, and an hour later, I understood more about data lakes and building them in AWS and what that meant and what the, um, the great sort of promise of developing uh, in that space really was. And so immediately had the light bulb of like, uh, we've got to get him to, to talk to us in the, in the cloud uh, meetup. So uh, very excited to hear this talk and uh, thank you Sandeep in advance. So all yours. All right. Uh... Thank you, thank you, uh, Jason. I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, the uh, organizing team. Uh, thank you for inviting me over here. Uh, can you see my slides? Yep. All right, let me go to present mode. All right, I'm going to be covering uh, a few topics today uh, and sharing a story about uh, what we built and what was the need in terms of uh, uh, embracing the data lake and what is one of the concrete use cases in terms of uh, the application that is uh, helping uh, the campus community. Um, so uh, I'm Sandeep Jayaprakash. Uh, I'm a cloud and data architect uh, with research teaching and learning group. Um, uh, so uh, I've also had uh, background uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, building open source platforms, open source analytical platforms uh, uh, in education before. I've also double backed as data scientists uh, in, in my prior roles. Um, and and uh, the progression has been mostly uh, um, in a way where I wanted to be a data scientist. I was heavy in it. Data was always not right. So I had to go back, uh, become like the engineer as well as uh, the platform architect to kind of uh, streamline everything so that we can do more cool stuff with uh, data science in education and uh, try to bring value. So uh, that's my brief story. Uh, it's not a single person team. Uh, we have uh, a, a group of awesome people uh, working uh, within our team. Uh, we are a group of uh, three uh, developers uh, and the data scientist uh, over there and uh, a QA expert, a user experience designer. Uh, we have a, a good service lead uh, uh, who double backs as product owner uh, and uh, a technical project manager and a DevOps person uh, who helps uh, uh, with the smooth sa sailing of the ship. Having said that, this is not a team where all of us are working on this project at uh, all times. At any time, you can expect like two development resources actively working on it uh, in collaboration with uh, the uh, other support team. Uh, we, uh, in RTL, uh, the proje uh, projects uh, uh, development and operations group are also responsible for a range of applications and integrations that are uh, uh, required in the teaching and learning space. Uh, those, uh, the, uh, some of the projects are listed over there. Uh, we maintain uh, the campus learning management system integrations, B courses. Uh, there is a museum informatics uh, team uh, within the group. Uh, some people are on the call. Uh, and then uh, there is a course capture service. And on top of it, we uh, also do like the data lake work, the uh, advising space, et cetera. Uh, we are about a mile away from the campus. Uh, uh, that's where uh, we are. You can see the Campanile Tower um, on Telegraph. So what I'm gonna cover is three major topics. What is learning analytics? Uh, a brief overview of it, uh, and then the advising application itself, uh, uh, and, and some of the features, we're gonna skim through uh, what it has to offer. Uh, and then we're gonna delve into the uh, machinery behind it, the data lakes, uh, which is helping us uh, uh, do this at scale. Uh, and then I'm also gonna share some lessons learned uh, as time permits. So learning analytics, this is a formal de uh, definition. It's uh, defined as a measurement, collection, analysis, and reporting of uh, data about learners in the context. Um, and this is mainly to improve uh, and optimize uh, the learning environments uh, that they are uh, operating in. 
what it basically does is it uh, uh, takes the big data approaches and uh, uh, the advances that has happened in digital content uh, in education, uh, combines them uh, both uh, with uh, uh, an angle of human-centric design, right, uh, to build uh, applications of value and deliver value to the stakeholders. Uh, these are some of the common use cases. Uh, I, I just uh, put together uh, a few of the things where uh, uh, learning analytics is uh, widely visible. Uh, based on the pain, pain points, some of it is uh, probably uh, highlighted. Uh, I should have highlighted instructional resiliency at this point uh, more because of COVID. Um, so uh, student success is one of the major pain points uh, uh, where uh, uh, you're trying to improve retention rates, trying to provide uh, timely feedback uh, to the learners and the stakeholders involved, like advisors, instructors, etc. Uh, there's a lot of other stuff like uh, uh, degree planning, uh, discovery, uh, core discovery, knowledge discovery, what artifacts are people looking into, course recommendations, what are interesting to kind of uh, take, create uh, adaptive learning pathways, etc. So these are some of the high level use cases. We're going to focus mostly on uh, uh, academic advising, student success related analytics uh, uh, in this in this talk uh, for most part. So the three projects uh, uh, that uh, um, started all of this, right? Like it, it, it all started uh, pretty much at the, uh, uh, around the same time. Uh, it was uh, probably mid 2017 uh, where uh, um, we were uh, looking to build a data uh, infrastructure uh, and embrace the cloud for it because it was like a natural point uh, to uh, kind of uh, uh, start looking into big data frameworks, etc. Uh, especially uh, given that we are a lean team. Uh, the main goal for us was uh, our campus learning management system had moved to a cloud-based vendor. So all the data that we had access to prior because of on-prem deployment was no longer access in the same volumes uh, uh, for us within the group. So we thought, okay, let's go ahead and start bringing that data in, building all the pipelines to bring that data in, house it, uh, make it queryable, et cetera, so that we can start looking into certain use cases. That was the data and the cloud angle. And also uh, we wanted to dabble with the cloud and uh, probably build uh, uh, the capacity within the team and skill set around it. Uh, so we were kicking the tires around uh, uh, in, in AWS at the time. And then um, a use case uh, 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 fell into a lapse. Uh, uh, basically, our uh, director um, within uh, the PDO group uh, was in communication with the Athletic Studies Center uh, and the director, Derek Van Riemann, over there. And uh, they were trying to uh, uh, build uh, an advising application, which is, uh, um, which is a lot more data driven. Uh, so that was a natural connection for us uh, to kind of start bringing all of those concepts together where we are looking at student success, learning analytics, advising flows as a use case, uh, and also uh, 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 elaborating our cloud and data strategy uh, uh, as a, as a long-term goal. Um, so uh, these were the main reasons, uh, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, community needed modern set of advising tools, uh, which were more, more data driven. Um, and uh, some of the unique challenges we had was there were a lot of siloed systems, uh, as in, uh, uh, in, in this day and age, uh, we have uh, data coming from uh, uh, a lot of systems and we needed to kind of uh, get the bird's eye view uh, uh, across uh, the systems. So that's why the data lake concept became more enticing. Uh, and uh, uh, generally speaking, data is a strategic as asset to our campus. So uh, uh, data uh, strategy became like crucial uh, for us. And then uh, 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 we went ahead and built the BOA application, which is like the Berkeley Online Advising uh, tool. Um, and it currently uh, caters to uh, most of the undergraduate advising uh, community at this point. So this is the stack where it fits. Uh, BOA is the end user facing application. And then we have Nessie. That Nessie is our uh, uh, quote unquote data lake manager. Uh, of sorts, uh, uh, which uh, keeps uh, the ship running tight. 
Uh, and then we have two components, Learning Record Store and uh, the Core Data Lake itself. Learning Record Store, it's, uh, um, uh, it's part of the data lake, I would say, um, mainly because it's the streaming component of the data lake. Uh, and, and then we have the batch processes, which is running in the core uh, data lake service. So uh, this is how it kind of divvies up uh, uh, and how it all fits together. So uh, let me quickly go through Berkeley Online Advising uh, and show some features uh, uh, over here. Uh, these are the stage-by-stage uh, -stage deployments that we had. Um, first uh, pilot was with the Athletic Study Center. Uh, we catered to about like 900 student athletes, uh, like 20 uh, staff members. Uh, this was an interesting use case for us, mainly because uh, uh, athletes are not a, like a homogeneous population, academically speaking, right? Like they come from different uh, uh, programs, uh, they have different uh, 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 academic goals, etc. cetera. Uh, their enrollments are different. So uh, in, in reality, although we are working with 900 students, we are touching at least uh, uh, half of the uh, courses and everything that is offered within Berkeley uh, to synthesize the data. Uh, uh, coming out of the learning management system, student information system, uh, some of the other institutional data, et cetera, putting all of them together. So uh, there was a scale challenge uh, developing already uh, with this particular use case in interesting ways. Uh, and then we kind of scaled it uh, uh, in the next semester with College of Engineering uh, to about like eight advisors who cater to uh, 3,300 students. You can see some of the anecdotes uh, from uh, uh, from, from the advisors uh, in the group. Um, and our newest partners are College of Letters and Science, uh, who are our biggest group, I would say, uh, about 150 advisors and 22,000 students. So in reality, we are touching most of the student population in combination uh, across the colleges at this point. And then we are also working with uh, uh, Centers for Equity uh, and Inc. Um, sorry, educational equity and excellence. Um, so, uh, uh, this was mainly to identify uh, who are the students who are gonna be admitted uh, and are already in the system and how uh, uh, division of equity and inclusion can help them uh, by, by looking uh, at their day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, uh, progress uh, within Berkeley and their experience in general. So uh, I have some screenshots. I'm going to flip through uh, this uh, uh, really quickly uh, because of uh, low, low time. Um, so mainly uh, some of the features include the advisors uh, can create targeted cohorts. Uh, there are like smart filtering uh, options and uh, heavy search options. Uh, think indexes, uh, massive indexes on uh, different kinds of data. So they can slice and dice the student population based on variety of criteria, uh, create their groups that they wanna track uh, that is more meaningful for them uh, and uh, uh, generate like uh, uh, the, the student list that they wanna uh, focus on, right? Like on a day-to-day -day, uh, workflow basis. So uh, here you'll see some of the information about like all the classes they're taking, all the units, what GPA there are uh, uh, for each of the students within the cohort. Uh, we have also added uh, uh, some features like uh, alerts, uh, uh, where we are raising alerts around, uh, um, um, say, a low GPA, low activity, uh, have they turned in the assignment or not, etc. those kind of things. Um, so once uh, um, they want to take a look at the uh, a particular student, they can enter the student page. It'll give them more uh, fine grain details about like uh, 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 the, uh, about, about the student's academic case, uh, all of the um, um, say their minors and number of units, etc. That they've been taking, uh, and also uh, it creates sort of an academic timeline as to what happened at various junctures. Uh, this includes advising notes, registrations, any holds, uh, GPAs, everything, all of that relevant information uh, so that they can uh, uh, spend more time uh, uh, on the quality of advisement as opposed to scavenging data from different uh, set of uh, uh, um, uh, campus systems where this, might, this data might reside. So uh, this is like a single point system where they can come in for the data and uh, um, start looking at uh, um, at, 
uh, devising advising strategies. Uh, they can also annotate stuff as to what happened during uh, uh, the advising uh, and, and uh, note down uh, any of the uh, important details. These might be available for uh, rest of the advisors as well, uh, uh, involved in the management, uh, uh, in, in the case management of the student. Um, and they can also get like a, a summary view of what happened across the semesters for that particular student. And they can also drill down on a class level to see how they benchmark compared to their peers in terms of assignment submissions activity and all of that. So uh, here you see some uh, um, uh, some charts, uh, some some uh, uh, box plots, which uh, uh, which which help them to see if they are doing uh, how they are doing in relation to the average of the class in variety of criteria, assignments, activity, um, and there is also a visual way to uh, kind of uh, look at. Uh, um, uh, the student performance and uh, within the class and uh, uh, take a look at like the outliers, uh, device strategies accordingly, uh, and, and reach out to the students. So they're providing timely help. So that's, uh, uh, that's like the uh, features uh, per se. It is also a device agnostic sort of application. Um, so uh, um, what we are getting to is this is a lot of data that we are synthesizing because it looks at every course that the student has taken, um, uh, create of, uh, creates features and metrics uh, for uh, for the student performance, does the same for each of their peers and uh, does like a benchmark comparison and provides that uh, data back to uh, the advisors, so a synthesized view of sorts. So uh, yeah, uh, and, and also in the process, it is bringing data from multiple systems and giving contextual information uh, around what's happening uh, within the uh, students' uh, academic progress in general. Let's see, uh, look, look at uh, the uh, machinery behind it. Um, all of this is possible mainly because we are uh, trying to pool the data from multiple systems into a central repository. We call it uh, the uh, learning data lake because uh, uh, for most part at this point, we are focusing on learning data uh, and some construction, uh, conceptual, uh, sorry, <clears throat> conceptual uh, data uh, and contextual data around uh, um, um, uh, 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 around around like uh, uh, the students biographics uh, uh, demographic data etc uh, uh, that we are mapping currently so um, essentially uh, this is a general process data framework but our use case is more learning data at this point uh, what it helps us do is break silos, bring data in like uh, uh, a myriad of easy ways to analyze and makes it accessible in general and uh, go from there uh, to start build, building more targeted data pipelines uh, that can be more useful for our application layer and supporting the stakeholders. Uh, this is Nessie. Nessie is our uh, data lake manager. Uh, so there is an internal joke. We started calling it data lock because it was like a smaller, uh, <laughs> uh, a smaller data lake. And then uh, uh, Nessie is the monster, which basically goes in uh, and and tries to uh, make sense out of the data within the uh, within the lake. Uh, the essential goal is to start uh, getting all of uh, the data, relevant data, um, in context uh, into a central repository and then start using that for more, uh, uh, more useful uh, work around uh, building our analytical insights uh, and eventually doing uh, quality machine learning, et cetera, on top of it. Uh, the general premise of Data Lake, what it is doing is it collects all of the information from a variety of system, uh, stores it in a centralized repository, and then uh, uh, it provides uh, uh, a lot of compute resources for you to, kind of, uh, to blend this information in myriad of ways, hammer this into, uh, into, your, uh, into uh, uh, the uh, use case uh, driven requirements, 
uh, and then uh, basically um, generate insights that can be uh, fed into the application layer uh, through appropriate distribution mechanisms. Uh, I use this slide mainly because I consider this a design pattern uh, in general, mainly because uh, um, uh, you can really do this in your data center, any of the cloud providers, you can also uh, use the same uh, concepts and build something on a smaller level, even on your laptop, right? Like, although uh, uh, it's not that visible you, uh, to, to kind of uh, reinvent the wheel, uh, but uh, the generic theme is, uh, uh, look into um, different sort of uh, compute options, storage options that are available to you uh, in variety of uh, uh, um, uh, cloud platforms or in your data center and assemble a pipeline which makes more, uh, uh, which is more meaningful for your use case to uh, massage the data uh, into proper formats. So that's the general theme. Uh, so this is uh, how uh, all the three projects fit. Um, so the learning record store is basically the streaming component. Uh, this was our first project that we embarked on and built. And the second was the Nessie Data Lake uh, itself, uh, uh, which uh, uh, currently brings a lot of uh, institutional data in a batch mode. Uh, uh, essentially, these two projects uh, are collapsing into each other uh, to form something called as a Lambda architecture uh, in, the, in the big data world, uh, because you get like uh, the fast-paced data from the streaming layer, uh, streaming layer and uh, you also get like, uh, the batch mode data at regular intervals from uh, uh, from uh, uh, the batch layer. Uh, at the end, you combine both of the results and uh, uh, offer it to the presentation layer. So that's the general theme. So essentially, we are getting a bird's eye view on uh, uh, different kind of uh, learning data. These are some of the design constructs that uh, we were looking into, have some sort of a centralized data storage mechanism. Uh, and uh, have variety of uh, uh, technologies that can uh, facilitate uh, quick collection of data from different systems, data adapters of sort. Uh, we were also looking into, uh, um, uh, into building a common uh, data catalog. Uh, the reason is uh, we wanted some sort of a, a way to scale uh, the, the data and the compute uh, easily. So uh, for that to, uh, um, happen, we needed to decouple the storage layer and the uh, compute layer so that we can scale them uh, easily uh, and independently of each other. That way uh, you can uh, uh, get more performance uh, and engage more resources uh, to, to uh, process your data. And also look into a variety of uh, uh, processing frameworks um, uh, like uh, some of them are popular, Redshift, Spark, Athena, to hammer your structured, unstructured data uh, into proper formats, uh, and then uh, uh, look into delivering the insights uh, around uh, uh, different sort of analytical criteria. It could be descriptive statistics, predictive analytics, or prescriptive uh, 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 modeling that you do to change the course of action, etc. The key to all of this is to make sure the data is secure. Uh, this is a slide from uh, how to do it in AWS. Uh, I'm not going to go deep into this, but uh, uh, it's going to touch on the same concepts, what options are available within the AWS. Um, so essentially how we are fitting the pipeline is SE is our uh, puppet master of sorts, which uh, uh, kind of manages the, all of the pipelines. And then we have the ingestion layer where we have multiple data adapters and mechanisms bringing data into a centralized storage bucket. Um, and then we are building a, a metadata schema and cataloging this data in a central way so that uh, we can scale all of the compute layers individually. Uh, the compute layers we are using are uh, Redshift Spectrum, uh, uh, Glue, which is an abstraction of Spark uh, within AWS, and Athena, which, is, which runs on open source uh, Presto underneath. It's again an AWS abstraction. And then uh, you can create targeted uh, ETL workflows to massage the data into proper formats and, and, and offer it to your application layer, to your research layer, as well as your BI layer in terms of Tableau, et cetera. Uh, 
so there are a few more uh, uh, detailed uh, view or uh, views around uh, um, uh, a variety of components. Uh, uh, I'm going to share the slides and hopefully people can take a look. I'm going to speed this up a little bit. Uh, the whole goal was if you're building an application and getting data from multiple sources, uh, right, uh, then it basically slows down your system. Uh, consider decoupling your analytics layer and uh, application layer, uh, and then you will be able to process this information, dumb it down on the application level, and basically uh, surface those insights in a very performant manner. Right, so currently this is the uh, way we are kind of sourcing information from the data lake instead of hitting uh, 15 different APIs to get the data. Uh, some lessons learned, data governance, very key, uh, involve stakeholders early and often, and uh, make sure you're uh, uh, looking into best practices on data security, et cetera. Uh, this is mainly to create uh, a vision around what you wanna do. Think of it uh, 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 like you have a crystal ball around like what, you, what sort of needs you uh, wanna uh, satisfy with having a data lake. That'll give you a direction about like amount of data that you wanna bring in, how you wanna secure it, who you want to work with, et cetera. And that will all uh, come into, uh, uh, come in as requirements when you're bringing, uh, when you're building your governance model and security. Uh, consider having different protection levels and zones so that uh, 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 you have uh, areas for experimentation, uh, pr protected areas for more sensitive data, et cetera, uh, and, and you're creating these zones so that uh, you can uh, uh, devise appropriate security uh, for different kinds of data. Uh, prioritize use cases to keep focus because it is kind of easy to bring a lot of data uh, at a time with no end goal. Uh, this kind of gives you a little more focus around like uh, how to manage the data better, et cetera. Uh, whoops. Data swamps. These are something which are real. Uh, data, data lakes are pretty uh, um, easy to build. Right, but uh, at the end of the day, you need like sustaining mechanisms for maintenance and operations so that you're keeping it pristine. So having good catalog mechanisms, uh, having good lifecycle rules and tag, tagging mechanisms, et cetera, so that you can uh, uh, know at every time what you're storing, where you're storing, how long it is stored, uh, et cetera, that is very important. And then you also need to look at like monitoring mechanisms, mainly because this is a heavily distributed system. So um, uh, keeping track of uh, what's running, where it is running, et cetera, uh, that becomes very important. That was the main reason we built uh, Nessie, which is a, a, a workflow orchestrator for our data lake. And expect processes to fail and uh, develop contingencies for it, uh, especially in streaming. Right, uh, uh, and, and also plan for uh, use cases where you're okay with having eventual consistencies and uh, some use cases where uh, um, you, know, you, need, uh, uh, you, need, you have hard cutoffs on uh, uh, the truth uh, element of the data, data integrity in general. Um, agility and iteration is very key. You can't build everything uh, in, a, in, in, uh, in one shot. So uh, kind of going through, um, um, uh, through building sandbox environments so that uh, your team can go ahead and kick the tires uh, for a bit uh, in, 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 a, in a, a very secure environment, uh, then shoot for an uh, MVP, document all the learnings uh, around uh, what happened in the proof of concept stages. This will all help you in terms of uh, coming up with what process works best for you in general. Uh, and also big data landscape changes quite a bit. So uh, refrain from uh, um, putting all eggs in one basket around, uh, uh, you know, uh, not making things extensible, et cetera, uh, because there is always a new way to do things and uh, new technologies that are coming up, which makes things easier uh, to process data. Uh, and uh, if you're starting with AWS uh, uh, or any other service, stick to the core services. 
uh, in the cloud platforms because there are about like 180 services where you you can go uh, and get lost uh, in terms of like oh how do I do this how do I do that etc. Uh, stick to core services initially when you're kicking the tires uh, that will give you a solid foundation and then you can start bringing in others uh, as necessary. Uh, future work uh, uh, we are looking to uh, kind of take the advising toolkit that we have built uh, uh, and uh, um, make it a central solution if possible. Uh, we are already doing it in some uh, ways, but there are still a good amount of shadow systems around advising. Uh, it also means that uh, there are uh, opportunities to bring in more uh, ways to curate advising workflows, optimize them so that it gives them uh, a good incentive to move to a centralized toolkit. Uh, and then this was one of the strategic uh, um, initiatives uh, within uh, the Reimagine IT within UC Berkeley, uh, building an enterprise data lake. Uh, to this regard, uh, we are partnering with uh, uh, multiple uh, teams within uh, uh, our ISNT division. Uh, we, are, we are working with our enterprise data warehouse team uh, to uh, kind of uh, build uh, uh, an enterprise data lake uh, in coordination with uh, data and platform services and security teams, et cetera, uh, so that we have a common solution uh, that everyone can uh, uh, kind of uh, come in and work with us to pull the uh, data in a centralized way and get more out of uh, uh, the uh, central IT way of uh, 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 managing things around uh, putting uh, more constructs around data governance, security, etc. Uh, very excited about this project. Uh, we are already uh, underway uh, and we have some workflows uh, that have been built uh, within the enterprise data lake team. Uh, expect uh, more uh, exciting work around this uh, in the next year. Um, so with that, I quickly ran through. I know I'm a little bit over time. Uh, I don't know if I have uh, time for questions, but uh, uh, so this is uh, basically introducing the concept. Please do feel free to reach out to us um, uh, beyond the presentation as well. We have our contact de details over here, and uh, I'm also including some of the repos which uh, uh, have like a UC copyright. So it's open for not-for-profit use, et cetera. Uh, feel free to uh, look into it or reach out to the contacts below so that uh, we can have further conversations. Thank you so much, uh, Sandeep. And J Jason, I think you're, you're moderating the Q&A. Uh, sure, uh, happy to do so, yeah. Uh, tremendous. Uh, First question I'm seeing, are there any cross UC issues that have come up in your BOA project or does each campus roll their own? So uh, currently we haven't encountered as much cross UC issues per se. Uh, uh, we have a lot of shadow systems as in uh, um, within UC Berkeley, every community engineering had their own set of tools uh, even today, Athletic Study Center has like a robust tool that they have built over a period of 10 years in FileMaker Pro, uh, uh, basically. Uh, and and uh, 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 they have uh, a really good set of uh, uh, tools and use cases that it is supporting, right? So uh, in terms of data, it is pretty contained. Uh, uh, at least UC Berkeley data is fairly contained. Um, and we haven't encountered as much uh, uh, cross-institutional cross issues because uh, we haven't looked into those kind of deployments yet. Uh, maybe once we uh, centralize this as an advising platform uh, within UC Berkeley and bring in all the shadow systems, that might be something to take a look at. Okay, another question is, is the data lake continuously refreshed? Yes. So we have a streaming component where um, um, uh, within the learning management system, 
uh, whenever something happens, it, uh, events get fired up, uh, it comes into our stack, we process it, uh, we catalog it and, uh, in the system. And then also we have like uh, nightly feeds, hourly feeds, et cetera, that kind of uh, refresh the data and bring in uh, incremental data or you know, uh, data from our regular databases, uh, uh, the changes, et cetera. Um, so that we are maintaining uh, um, uh, a, a, a single source of truth, sort of, uh, in a way. Uh, um, yeah, uh, a refreshing is a big part of uh, uh, maintaining uh, the data lake. Uh, that's, that's how you, uh, you can end up with uh, data swamps, et cetera, if those processes fail. Um, yeah, and then whatever campus systems are saying, we'll be saying something else and that won't line up and uh, that, would, that would be a fail, definitely. Great. Uh, I guess the last question I get to ask is, um, you've architected this and built it out in AWS. Um, how did you come to, to decide AWS and, and in consideration of other possible options? Yeah, so, so when I was coming in on board, or on board uh, with the team, um, there was already an AWS account. There was uh, um, some kicking uh, the tires kind of uh, uh, happening uh, within the team. And I had some uh, uh, background uh, uh, in the open source world uh, with Hadoop, Spark, et cetera. And for one of the projects, we were also doing AWS. So there was some skill set already in the team around AWS. Um, and then we kind of looked into uh, other clouds as well uh, to see what are the merits, et cetera. But uh, um, it, it, it wasn't kind of giving, it, was, it wasn't like too much uh, uh, benefits at the time that we were getting uh, moving to other clouds. Uh, and especially we, were, we ha already had a plan to stick to uh, abstraction on top of uh, open source platforms that the cloud vendors offer, like Spark, uh, et cetera. Um, so uh, it, it didn't matter as much, uh, per se, uh, uh, picking up AWS. And also, it had a great range of services and integrations in general uh, at the time uh, compared to others. But now, uh, most of the cloud uh, uh, providers have caught up uh, uh, in many ways. And like I said, this is a design pattern. You can implement it in AWS, Google, Azure, or even your data center. Um, yeah. It, it depends on uh, the skill set of the team, I would say, uh, and also some cost considerations. Uh, if you are getting good deals with uh, the cloud providers, that is uh, one of the uh, things to consider. Uh, support is another thing uh, to consider, right? Uh, uh, even within the campus, if uh, there is, uh, uh, there are more teams actually working within a particular uh, uh, cloud uh, uh, vendor, uh, cloud environment, then you have a lot more, uh, say, arch architectural powwows you can do uh, in the forums like this uh, to to actually improve your designs, etc. Uh, and also um, uh, plan uh, for an exit strategy as well. Uh, that will, uh, although you're not going to implement it right away, it'll help you help with your designs. Um, so that if you do want to migrate to a different cloud because you got a better offer or it is uh, providing uh, um, more benefits, then uh, uh, the lift uh, to actually do that wouldn't be that bad. And there's going to be a lift uh, uh, in whatever you choose, right? Uh, more, uh, migration is always, uh, there's some amount of effort involved. But if you're designing things in a way where uh, um, you're planning uh, for exit, um, then it makes it easier. Tremendous. Thank you so much, Sandeep.